So, welcome to this lecture where we are inside Jupyter Notebook with our stochastic. So, again, it was a lagging indicator and we have a link here to Investopedia if you want to read more about it. I put the calculations here, how you calculate it, and this first looks, wow, that's complex, but don't worry about it, we'll get there. So, what it has is something called a 14 high, which actually is the maximum of the last 14 trading days. So, that's the max value. This is actually where we use the high value on our trading stock data. Amazing, right? Before, we only used the close. And then we have a 14 low, which is the minimum of the last 14 trading days. Again, a lot for us. We're using something new here, the low value. So the percentage K and the percentage D is calculated in the following manner. So percentage K, the last close, that's the last closing price, minus 14 low, this one we calculated here, multiplied by 100 divided by uh, the difference between 14 high and 14 low, right? Those value here. So that's basically it. If you just follow this magic formula, there will be no troubles. And percentage D is simply the moving average of percentage K. So that's pretty nice. And our signal is, well, the buy signal is when percentage K is larger than percentage D. So that's how we're going to use it. So let's get started. So I think you're familiar with this one. So we import the pandas and the matplotlib. Good, you're comfortable about that. And then we read our data. You're also comfortable about that. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to calculate is the 14 high. Unfortunately, we cannot have a... Unfortunately, we don't want variables with a 14 first, so we want we just call it high 14, okay? That's what we call it. Yeah, that's right. So what was that, right? So we need to find the maximum value for the last 14 days. So we have our ticker here, and we take... We, yeah, now we actually need to read the data here. Actually, we want to just recall how it looks like, right? So hit. Because remember, we have a high value here, and this is actually the value we're going to use because that's a high value. So we're going to find the maximum of the last 14 days of this one here. So how do you do that, right? Well, obviously, you need to take the high here. And then we make a rolling window again, right? Remember, this is rolling. And don't you think we can just take a max? Of course, we need to tell it that's the 14-day period. And then we just take the max. Don't you think we can do that? Huh? I think so. Let's try no okay so again you have to help me here right high is with a capital h who it was right right let's look at high and we actually need to look at tail now and we get some values here right is this the one well in order to get that we may actually need the tail of the last 15 days just to be sure and then we have to look at the highest value. Actually, it should not be 15 days. It should have been 14 days. So let's skip the first one. And let's look at it. 280 here. 280. It seems like 280, right? And what is it? 280. So here you have it, right? So it's nice, right? You see you have 280 here. I think it was also 280 here, but it was less up there, right? It was less this one here. So this one here. So it, what it does is it takes... Uh, the high value or the maximum value for the last 14 days. So this is really nice. So let's clip this out. And we also need a low 14. And how can you help me with that? And remember here, you need to help me to say it's a capital L, right? Capital L, right? Remember? Because the low here is with capital, right? <laughs> remember that. Write that down. Rolling, 14. And instead of max, what should we take? Min, you're good. I like you. Okay, so let's take low tail. It was called low 14. You also have to help me here, right? Here we go. So 264. So let's find. So we actually have we actually have one here. Is there anything smaller? No, not at all. So again, you see here, this is actually correct. Okay, so far, so good. So we calculate the high and the low. Let's just remove this one to get up here to our formula. Then the formula here, let's just copy it down here. So we have it in a comment here, so we can recall it, right? So percentage K is equal to 
parenthesis, last close, <coughs> close, let's close, and then we minus uh, low 14, and uh, then we multiply by 100, divided by parenthesis, uh, high 14, low 14, right? Boom, that should be it, actually. And then in percentage K, we have to take tail again because we don't have the top values. We have some value here. And these values should obviously be, be between 100, no, 0 and 100, right? That's it, actually. Then we need the percentage D, which is equal to percentage K. And we take a rolling window of 3. And then we take the mean. Wow. That's it, actually. Here you go. Okay, so what we also want, we can actually add, just see it here. And you see here we have a different value here. But let's actually just add them to our ticker here, because that's actually what we want. And we make percentage K here. Oops, it went outside. Here. And uh, percentage D here, right? So now we have them here inside our ticker. So let's take tail here and we see we have these values over on here. So let's try to actually put a chart with them and look at that, okay? So a figure, an axis, and a PLT, sub plots. And what we want to do is actually we take the ticker and then we have the, yeah, again, we need the location here. We only take the last year here, or one year of data here. And then we plot it, and axis, axis, and I was a bit too fast here. We obviously also need what columns do we want? Percentage K and percentage, oops, percentage D, okay? So that's actually it, right? So now we have these one here. And you're probably wondering about how about these overbought and oversold signals. Actually, this is, maybe we should zoom in a bit here, actually. Because this is really difficult to see anything on this one. So actually, let's shorten the time period here. So 2020, 0, 7, 0, 1. Right, this is a bit better. Then we have the crisis here. Yeah. Okay. And another fun thing you can actually do is axis. How is it called? AXH line? Is that what it's called? Yes. And then you can actually put these values here 80 and color red. And AX, AX, H line 20, color red. Right? So you see here? So now you get these lines here where it's overbought and oversold actually. And the final thing we want to do is actually to take the ticker location. Oops. And we take the same location here. And uh, then we take the close price here. And then we do the plot axis, axis, secondary y, true. Probably going to be a mess. But the but we like mess right now. Okay, so let's look at this actually together. So what did it do, right? So this is actually quite interesting, right? So this is a price before we have the full crisis here and the green one here, right? You see it goes here? Yes, here we go. So actually already here, already here it says we are over, it goes down below here, right? So it says, if you use the overbought, oversold signal, it says here, go sell, right? This is already over here, right? It has a tiny above here, when it says sell again, and it says buy here again. So it's not conclusive, for right? And if you look at the way we interpret that, percentage K, percentage D, and it has a lot of signals over here, but in general here it says sell again, right? And then it says buy, and then sell, and buy, and sell, and buy, and sell. But in general, and when it's down here, it says it's oversold, right? Go buy. And then here it says it's over, overbought again. So, again, there's nothing like magic that can just help you with everything. <laughs> but you see how it can be used. 
like that. But we're going to use it in a simple manner. We're going to create a signal ticker signal, which is equal to percentage k greater than percentage d. Wasn't that it? Here we have percentage k larger than percentage d, right? So I just add them here, dunk, dunk, and then I should have the signals down here, right? And uh, as you probably see, this one is a bit more chatty, you could call it. But again, combined with the others, it should be better. You have more confidence in what it says, right? And uh, yes, that's actually it, right? So here we have plotted it, everything together. It's a bit messy, as you can see. But again, you see a tendency. What you can see here is like, well, how does it compute together? Uh, like that. And if you really want it, you can actually amp you could put some alpha on these ones actually. Alpha 0.3. I just want to show you. And then you would make it a bit more transparent. And if you want it, let's say you want it oh actually also you wanted these ones here, alpha, maybe alpha five. And then you have a bit more Maybe it's easier to interpret now to see the differences, right? You see? So you can play around with that if you like. That's how you I would sit and play to get the most visual. Normally you can also you can also make two layers of charts, so the one up on top of the others. Uh, so you have like two charts instead of one. Uh, that's also an option. It's quite normal to have that on financial pages. But sometimes it's also nice to have it right on top of each other so you can see when it's exactly it does what. Okay, so enough of that. So you, again here you see quite how simple it actually is to take, uh, take a description of something, a technical indicator, calculate it yourself, make these trading signals here, buy and sell signals in your data frame, and continue with that. So what we're going to do next is actually to do a, a Excel sheet that can contain all this information. It's going to be quite exciting. And this is where I think there's an advantage of doing it in Python instead of taking it directly on the uh, financial pages, because here you have isolated and it can do whatever you want with the data and add more if you want. So I'm really excited about the next one. So let's get started with that one and end this one here. Amazing, right? See you in the next one.